here with Brew Geek, joined by... Michael, I love the Joker, but maybe not today. Oh. What we're going to be discussing tonight is the movie, The Joker. Uh, it's come out and has been the number one nominated movie this year for Academy Awards with 11. Uh, what, where... We're going to ask some questions and some hard-hitting ones involving this movie. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot to dive in. Um, yeah, there's a lot about this one. Uh, it's a not, lot of mixed, a lot of mixed emotions on these from a lot of different fans, uh, comic book and movie. maybe goers alike. Man, it's not the first comic book movie to be nominated for best picture. That go to Black Panther, I do believe. May have been one of the Nolan movies. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am because I don't know everything. I don't sit there and just Google everything beforehand. Um, but with the Joker, you have not a superhero movie. You don't really even have a comic book movie. If you take away every instance to Arkham and the Waynes, and you even still called that movie The Joker, you would have no idea that it was based on a DC character. Mm -hmm. Even if you know DC characters, if I went to the movie, they took away Arkham, Waynes, Gotham City, all that, they took away all that from the movie, would have no idea that it was based on the DC Joker. Which, I mean, they're saying it's like an Elseworld story of Joker and all of that. Um, now, all in all, great movie. Great performance by Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Todd Phillips, if you ever told me that the dude that directed The Hangover would be up for Best Director, I would yeah, you probably... Yeah, that at all. I would probably just roll on the ground. I think I have the name right. Todd Phillips could be the dude that did Deadpool. Who knows? Um... um but if you told me that, if you told me the dude that did The Hangover was going to be up for Best Picture, I would roll on the ground and then punch you. But they just, to me, <clears throat> I can understand the crazy part. You know, he's like you, the Joker. There's not going to be a method to the madness. He's got, you know, he's, he's crazy, and you kind of want to see how he gets to that part, how he becomes so damaged, and he gets to that part. And, and I understand it. I mean, a lot of people for years kind of want to know, based like an origin story, to an extent. Um, but letting this dude basically be a punching bag for everybody, just to me, just didn't work. Like, they just, you know, he's a punching bag for everybody. And I understand you got to have a certain, uh, you know, you got you got to make that make the monster. But yeah. it's, you can't do it like that, man. Not, not to a point where this guy, this guy was methodical. He was the greatest villain of all time for a reason. It's because you didn't know what to expect from him. Um, you didn't really even get that until the very end. Yeah, you get that at the very end at all. Like that's when when he finally starts stabbing him. That that was where he's like, okay, this is who they they're dealing with. And I understand you got to get to the steps to get to that point. But come on now, like the one thing I'll I did like it. I did like the story though. The story did have have moments. It did play into. It, you you kind of get to see how he finally just got pushed too far, and to the point where when he finally did. He was random. He was random, which is what the Joker is. Like, you never know what to expect. And he got to that point. But, man, they, they made him weak. They made him, they made him so weak-minded that it kind of killed it. It was lackluster. He really was never that uh, genius that you get out of the Joker. I mean, you're talking about the dude that goes head-to-head -head with Batman on stuff. And... How he took down Superman. So, if this guy, you're telling me this guy that we've seen on screen is going to take him down? Hell well, no. It's Elseworlds, so it's just kind of a basic storytelling. But what I go back to with them talking about uh, a Joker origin story is the creator of the Joker even said that he never wanted a true origin story for the Joker, which you kind of don't get, which you kind of get at the end when he just is sitting there smoking a cigarette talking to a psychiatrist and he just says he wouldn't understand. You get that kind of confusion of, did he understand, he had head trauma, he had imagined stuff through the whole movie. You get the, what was real, what wasn't, feeling, which is a 
good Joker-esque feeling to get and that kind of saved a lot of the movie for me because without that if you just sit there and you define and give the Joker definitive origin story no you go against even what the creator wants and I'm not trying to take anything away from the movie the movie's great Joaquin Phoenix is he's probably got the best acting role in that movie that I've seen this year he did terrible things that looked like to his body to get into that role he is Deathly skinny. He practiced that old school. Like Joker. Christian Bale. Yeah. Move on that one. He practiced that old school Joker comedian dance again and again and again. Kind of got tired of seeing that, but it fit that old school dance. It fit kind of the theme and the proper everything that was going on. But to the main point of everything, it's not to really talk about the movie. It is. This movie is up for 11 Academy Awards. It's the number one movie in the Academy Awards this year. Are we going to see a trend of movies like this that are comic book based, maybe superhero based, maybe not, to kind of break off from that superhero fatigue that we all know is setting in now? We've been through this whole saga of the Marvel movies. We've been through the ups and downs with DC. And now we are getting to the point where we are just burnt out. But with this, you just kind of get that breath of fresh air. And last year, too, you also got that breath of fresh air with Shazam, good comedy superhero movie? I think, I think DC is going to be the one to kind of come through. Like, I, I think that after the way Marvel basically shit the bed with Endgame, I think, I think we're going to get, I think DC is about to come, that they're, they're going to develop their stories and, and then we get to see kind of where they're going to go. My fear is, is that too many care, too many, you know, actors coming and going in, in, in DC Universe it's gonna kill them. I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard the hard deal. It's not like Marvel where the same character stayed with their with their roles the entire time. Um, <clears throat> you didn't see anything like that. You didn't see about a bunch of roles like that. But um, that that superhero fatigue set in. But I think DC is is gonna. Um, I think they're I think they're gonna they're they're gonna come to bat with this. One. I think they're gonna be the ones that actually come to the forefront because I think at this point, what do we really else want to see in Marvel? What do we want to see? But back to what we were talking about, what this video is about. Um, I think they take. I think they're taking these superhero roles a lot more seriously. Just, they don't take them so much as they're being uh, a comic book role for somebody who's just wanting to be a superhero. I think that they're taking. The, and plus, they have great actors that play these roles. So these great actors are taking great acting into those roles, and, and I think that you can see it. Um, Joaquin Phoenix did a great job. He done a great job with the Joker. Um, you couldn't have acted that out better, you yeah. know. He damn sure beat Jared Leto. By all means, he beat Jared Leto in, in an acting battle altogether. Um, to me, Jared Leto seemed forced. Yeah, seemed very forced as a Joker. Um, now he's no uh, Heath Ledger to me. He's no Heath Ledger at this point. Um, to me, that man defined. He he played a role. He played it well, and. And he defined who a lot of people want to always see as the Joker. He defined everything about the Joker, from the chaos to the unknown to the genius to mm -hmm. the unpredictability. He defined what Joker is. He made him a true be. killer, a lunatic killer. He made them chaos. That's what Joker is supposed to be. And as much as I don't want to touch on the subject, but I will, but Joker was no hero for the downtrodden or any of that. And he even said it during that interview when he had with Robert De Niro that it wasn't political or any of that. But yet they lift him up at the end as this political hero, this saint, savior of Gotham. Um, you have everyone wearing the Joker masks, the clown masks and everything like that. That was 
that's never the Joker. He's not. He's not. He's not an anti-hero. No, he's not an anti-hero. He's not a political activist. He's not any of that. He's he's chaos. And I mean, he did start it by you know starting to have the city burn and all of that. But it wasn't because of that. He just kind of fueled the flames of already growing strife between the lower class and the upper class. And that's not where Joker is meant to be. Joker is meant to be the fire that starts and then the upper class and the lower class, they jump into the fire. Yeah, Joker kills his own man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He kills his own man. How many burns money? He don't get a lot. He's just, there's just, it is. It's, 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 it's anarchy, chaos. You, you know, it's unpredictability. And in that movie, you didn't get that. Um, the acting was unbelievable. And, and I have to say, on a lot of movies we're getting these days, you don't, you know, I, it seems like Hollywood has forced a lot of things. I think they forced it, um, and you don't get as much acting out of some of that. Like in a role like this, you have to get somebody to actually play, be an actor. And he, he played a good actor. He was a good actor. He, he, he played a role in a very in a very good way, which is better than what most I've seen in any movies this past year. Normally you kind of get blockbuster fatigue too. Yeah, he. Um, it's just like everybody, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I like a lot of movies with The Rock, but you get like a lot of his kind of movies, and, and after you get that, you can't you can't sit back and go, well, this is the kind of movie, you know, this is not the acting that I want. Something you know, like The Rock could ever be the Joker. You don't get. Of course, Big Bang but you can't get that kind of acting in that. You game. don't get The Rock and be like, man, The Rock really played a unique role in this movie. You're like, yeah. oh, that that was another Rock movie. I enjoyed it. Next, to the, on to the next popcorn film. Yeah. Um, but no, Joaquin Phoenix put in the work, he put in everything, he had the laugh, he had a sickly look, and once again, back to that, oh god, he just, he looked like he was on this doorstep, but, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the Joker was, I know they're trying to tell their own story, but that was never really the Joker, what? Well, what we need to get off of is the actual movie and our thoughts of the movie and the deserve deserving the, the the awards that it got. Do you think it deserved the awards it got? Actor, best movie from what I saw this year, yeah. Uh, best wardrobe, yeah. Uh, it definitely deserved. I would say what it got. Um, best adapted screenplay. That's you know kind of up in the air because then you're saying you based it off of. Uh, already told story, which I guess the Joker is a told story, but that wasn't a told story, but then you're saying you're basing it off of a told story, but you're telling your own story. No. Uh, it's not. D directorial, uh, there are some directorial issues with the movie, um, and a lot of that is fixed with Joaquin Phoenix's acting. Uh, the minor players in the movie, you can tear tell that they just they kind of did not know where they were going but Joaquin Phoenix was just like get my backpack I got this guys um, I'm glad that something that was a little bit more known kind of got it and plus it was being a superhero movie you know it wasn't the normal that we're used to but I'm glad it got them. I mean a lot of times you get stuff like Sundance Film Festivals don't be wrong I mean if you're somebody who's submitted a video to the Sundance Film Festival good for you most of these movies are very edgy and liberal and the story just is it's like you're being force fed a belief it's not about the story it's about hey this is what we want you to believe I would say and uh and, and I you know I just don't ever buy into those things and, and they normally end up winning a lot of uh awards and, and I'm like there was a horrible movie like I had to basically I start thinking that I thought like it's one of those you fall asleep we had a drink through the whole thing you know and, and this movie you know I I'm a Joker fan, I, you know, I always have been a big Batman person, so I always like his ultimate villain, and I like him, actually, almost probably just as much as Batman, because he's got a, there's a deeper, there's a, like, to me, he's played so well, it's deep. Ian Yang. Yeah. Batman. And, uh, and I think he played a well, and I, I say this now, I'm not saying he's better than, you know, Jack Nicholson, but, I, but I'm going to say that he's not, he's no Heath Ledger, by no means, but I think he falls within the two or three. He's, he's definitely too. Familiar. He's gonna mark him a laugh <laughs> by no means, but that to me that's not a live version of him. And, and you know, Star Wars guy, Mark Hamill, you know, 
it's just it, you know it's not it's not the same. But I think he plays probably he plays that role well. He played better than than Leto did, um, and I think he's very deserving of those awards because um, he takes his he, he takes but, his roles very serious. I mean that guy played you know walk the line like I, I, I think probably he's one of the top actors period that can could pull something like that off. Well, so is Jared Leto, but I think I uh, got yeah, that Joker, but. He, he, he forced that. He forced that so much. Like, it seemed like it was so forced. I think that was directorial too. But to the point is, is this movie, are we going to see more future just genre shifts of superhero movies to try to keep that superhero fatigue from burning out? Are we going to see them jump into the, the horror movie, maybe romantic comedy, whatever, just to try to keep that... Superhero money coming in, but keep the fatigue because we're you, we're all so fatigued of it. We're all so tired. We're all just we're yeah. Not, we don't need another billion dollar budget action based superhero movie. Um, give us more of a story. Yeah. I, I think that's what everybody's at right now. Let's get a story. Um, that, that we can enjoy and, and take the story in, and not so much of the, uh, uh, of the effects the entire movie. Don't get me wrong, we still enjoy those, but I, like until someone basically gets a story that, because the end game kind of killed us on it, um, I think that you know you kind of got to go with this direction. I think a lot of these movies have been built off of the Nolan verse, you know. Uh, to me, by happen. far and away, is the best. By but far. I think those movies were more deserving of rewards and Academy nominations and what they got, but yeah. it was kind of before the superhero movies got, you know, more recognized. Less from the comic book to more to realistic. Um, and that's what I love about Batman. Batman's always seems to be that more realistic vibe to it. Um, I just have to kind of keep that. And I kind of like to see him do it more in superhero movies in general. Um, we don't want to get this to be a little too long. You got anything else you want to go into? No. Uh, I'm just kind of interested to see where it's coming with because we have Morbius coming out this year. We have Venom 2 coming out this year, which are two Spider-Man villains. and That'll be interesting. Uh, we have One Woman, Not well, Many Four. One Woman would be great. Uh, we have Birds of Prey, which with that hard, hard R rating, I'm very happy for. Uh, Probably some other ones. Uh, we have Black Widow. Black Widow looks like mm -hmm. it could be a fun just popcorn film. Uh, Black Widow should come out, you know, three years ago. I, th I think Black Widow should come out right after Ant Man. But once again, once that in and made that even better movie. Once again, what did I just think? Four or five. Uh, some good movies, man. There's some good movies coming out. Now I name I named five comic book movies that are coming out this year, and you want to. One of our subjects of this thing was comic book. So you gotta think five of the movies coming out. Do you think any of them's gonna be up for an award? I think they which one do you think it'd be? I don't think any of them will be up for an award. I don't think so either. Unless somehow Morbius is like deep dark acting and we get a Jared Leto award, but I think one of them might get something like best score or something, you know, something special like effects costume. Special effects, yeah, special effects, yeah. Something like that. Well, guys, we ain't gonna like we ain't gonna keep going with this one. Um, hey, you know, give us your your ideas and your comments of what you thought about the the awards and uh, what you thought about the, the movie, The Joker. Um, was it deserving? Was it not? What kind of uh, what do you think about uh, Joaquin Phoenix acting in this one? Um, and if all this was deserving, and if maybe we hit on some points that maybe you were kind of asking your own self. Uh, guys, thank you so much for checking us out. Please hit the subscribe button. And the bell for the notifications. We're out. Thank you. Peace.